Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Welcome to my kitchen in Korea. And a lot of you guys have been messaging me, asking me to, to show you recipes of the foods I eat when I'm traveling around the world. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite noodle dishes that I get here in South Korea. I just had this uh, last week, so it's been on my mind. And today, I'm gonna make it myself. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. And here's what I'm gonna use to make it. Scallions, this is like really large. I couldn't find smaller scallions in the supermarket. If you really like scallions, this will be really good for you. A couple of potatoes. I got some sesame oil, some hot oil, some cooking oil, soy sauce. I got some noodles, cornstarch, sugar, some salt, and the most important ingredient, zhongjiang, or black bean paste. Um, this is really similar to, of course, the Chinese jajiamen dish. And the biggest difference, of course, is the bean paste used. And you can pretty much customize this dish to whatever you like. A lot of Korean jajiamen I've had utilizes onions. Sometimes there's cucumbers. For me, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I love my jajiamen with potatoes, so I'm gonna use potatoes. I'm gonna use some scallions, and that's it. That's my vegetables. And for the noodles, I live in this area where there's no big supermarkets, so I couldn't really find nice fresh noodles, so I actually got jajiamen noodles from, from a pack, which that's, this will still work. This will taste really good. And another big difference between Chinese jajangmyeon and the Korean version is that I'm using pork belly here. I'm gonna cut it in, into like little chunks. And of course, in the Chinese version, predominantly we would use minced meat. And to put it all together, this dish is actually really, really simple. Just like the Chinese version. If you guys see my video on that, it's really simple. It's just tossing the sauce, ingredients, everything together and dripping it all over the noodles. You can cook as much noodles as you want. There's a lot of places I went to here in Korea that um, when they give you this dish, they separate the sauce and the noodles. So in case you want more noodles, less sauce, or more sauce, less noodles, you can customize that as well. And before we get started, a big thank you to Mizan for sponsoring this video. Check out what we're cooking with today. This is the pan that they sent me, and I have one of these in New York that I was using, and I liked it so much. Like I tell you guys, before I actually accept a sponsor on any one of my channels, I get their product, and I use it, I make sure I like it. So this was sent to me in New York, and also, of course, I got one here in Korea. And if you don't know me, then their mission is to inspire great cooking. And they do that by offering premium kitchen tools at affordable prices. And this I have here is the Mizen Stainless Steel Skillet, and you'll notice right away that it's Thick, like T-H-I-C-C, -C, thick. And the reason for that is it creates more distance between the surface of the pan and the fire so that the heat is more evenly distributed and it retains heat longer. Also, pure stainless steel pans are not good conductors and aluminum pans are good conductors, but they're not good at retaining heat. This is actually made with both stainless steel and aluminum, so best of both worlds. This thing, you can cook with this. It's oven safe, it's dishwasher safe. I mean, this will be your chosen instrument for, for cooking an egg and also for fighting off burglars that enter your house. But back in New York, I was using this to stir fry vegetables, fry eggs, cook steak. This is actually the only stainless steel pan I have. So if you want to give this a try, go to my link down below, mizen.com slash cookwithmikey. You'll get 20% off your first order. I feel like I'm threatening people holding this all the time. I'm gonna just put this down. And now I'm gonna do some cooking. First thing I'm gonna do, prep the ingredients. I'm gonna chop up my potatoes, chop up my scallions, chop up my meat. All right, you gotta forgive me. I'm in an Airbnb, so my cutting board and my knife and Basically everything is very limited, so this is what I gotta work with. Now you don't have to use as much potatoes as I am, but I love potatoes. And I'm not a big fan of onions in this dish. and stick with the potatoes. Next up, meat. Like I said, pork belly. This is about half a pound of pork belly. In this dish, the reason why I was thinking about it and I wanted to make it today. Last week, I went to this place that was recommended by, by a fan and it was the best jajiamen I think I've ever had in my life. I mean, it was served by this really adorable Korean lady who kept appearing in my video. You can watch that. I'll link it down below if you guys want to see that video. This dish was so amazingly delicious. And I've always loved the Chinese version, but I just realized I'd never tried to cook the Korean one before. Wow, we're gonna fix that, aren't we? All right, when everything's chopped up, gonna put it together. And what's really interesting is that Koreans use paper cups a lot of times as their measurements. So each paper cup is about 200 milliliter, which is about 0.85 of a cup. Then they also use smaller soju cups, which I don't have, which is about 180 milliliters. So a lot of times you see in Korean recipes, they actually measure and they actually say one soju cup or two soju cup or one regular cup. Anyway, happy to have this, my only measurement tool. All right, first thing we're gonna do is turn our black bean paste into actually jajang. Jajang in Chinese means fried sauce. So 
We're gonna fry it. Okay, another issue I'm kind of running into here. I only have one burner that works right on the corner, so I'm not gonna be able to cook my noodles and my sauce at the same time. But right about now, you gotta start planning your noodles. The sauce is gonna cook in a matter of minutes. Of course, I got potatoes going on, so mine might take a little longer, but typically noodles will take only about five minutes. So you gotta calculate your time. So when your sauce is ready, your noodles is set. But for me, I gotta do my sauce first and then my noodles, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball a couple of tablespoons of oil in there. And for this, you wanna add several tablespoons of oil because you don't want the sauce to stick to your pan and you can always pour the excess oil out and we're gonna heat the oil up on medium heat and I got my Korean paper cup full of black bean paste and add your sauce The heat is on medium and we're just gonna fry this for a couple of minutes add your sugar to the sauce to make it pop Again, be better with a wooden spatula. This is all I got besides the, the plastic thingy. Cook this in the oil for about three minutes and then we're gonna set it aside. And just make sure to keep stirring this so the bottom doesn't burn on the pan. And the reason we're frying this is because if you don't do it, the sauce is gonna taste a little bitter. So we're taking that out of it. Plus frying, we'll just wick this whole thing up. After the sauce is fried, we're gonna start cooking up our pork. So heat on medium high. Only about one tablespoon or less of oil because especially if you're using fatty pork, it's gonna have a lot of that oil anyway. And you can use the residual oil from when you were frying the bean paste. Cook it until you don't see any more pink. Actually, I forgot one step. I'm gonna add some scallions in there to cook with my pork. Add my potatoes. And if you're using different vegetables at this point, go ahead and add the different vegetables. Like I said, some people like onions, some people like cucumbers, whatever you want, this is the time to add it. After the potatoes or whatever vegetables you're using goes in, add a couple of cups of water and your bean paste and just cook all that together. Bring that to a boil, turn the heat down, and we're gonna simmer that for a few minutes until our potatoes become nice and mushy and so perfectly kissable and lovable and edible. Then this dish is ready. Really nothing to it, it's a lot of chopping and then a couple of times of stir frying. This dish, whether you're making the Chinese version or the Korean version, they're both so amazingly simple. I mean, the sauce is already there. You're just adding the ingredients. Really, that's what you're doing. No excuse not making this dish. And this is where like, I really wish I had my noodles done because I want the piping hot sauce on my ready-made noodles. <sighs> Unfortunately, I have to do it separately. But if you're doing it at home, please have your noodles be ready to welcome and accept with open noodling arms this amazing sauce. And this is also a good time to taste this and see if the saltiness is up to your standards. So if it's not salty enough, add some salt. You can also add some oyster sauce. That's perfect for me. Another key element of this dish is just how thick the sauce is. And this is why also I like using potatoes. It really thickens the sauce up a lot, but we want it even thicker. So go get some potato starch or cornstarch. I'm gonna use about two teaspoons of cornstarch, mix that with two teaspoons of water. We're gonna make a nice thick slurry to add in this once my potato is completely done. Also, how long you keep it on the stove depends on how mushy you want your potatoes to be. I want mine to be just like myself, super mushy. We're on our way. And make sure to move it around so it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan or stick too much. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more water in here because I want my potatoes to cook even softer than this. Again, just your personal preference. Guys, we are officially there. A little drizzle of sesame oil, a little drizzle of hot oil. We don't just want jajamin, we want spicy jajamin. Oh yeah. Just a little bit. That is starting to smell even better. Let's cover this on the noodles. Oh, that sesame oil. It adds that just perfect punch. That is so, so amazingly good. Oh my gosh. I gotta share. I could sell this. I'm just gonna say it. People will buy this. I would put this on any menu in my noodle restaurant. Amazing. Potatoes, beautifully gooey. Just the way I like it. Noodles, perfectly al dente. Fatty pork belly and jajamian is such a delight. 
the way the fat renders and combines with the subtly sweet earthy sauce, it's just a wonder for your taste buds. Dare I say, one of the best yajima I've ever had. Mmm. In Chinese words, it's just so xiang. It's so fragrant. The sauce hits you in all the right places. Again, a little sweet. So much umami flavor. Just umami just like slapping me upside the head. You never want to stop eating it. It's one of those noodles. You never want the slurping to stop. This is honestly so, so amazing. Probably owe a lot to Mr. Gene. This sauce is delicious. But guys, I'll put the recipe, the ingredients, everything down below. Go try this for yourself. It's so easy to make. Gotta try it. Got to try it. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Until we cook again, see you later.